Hello dear viewers and welcome to a new edition of Business Insider. I am Mohammed Abdurrahim and tonight we'll be talking about the indispensable role of artificial intelligence AI in business management. But as usual, we begin with a look at the latest uh, economic uh, um, stories making the headlines uh, and we start here in Egypt where the Cabinet's Information and Decision Support Center, the IDSC, um, affirmed that the net direct foreign investment witnessed a tangible increase in Egypt uh, in the year 2022. A 2023 global investment report uh, released uh, by uh, UNCTAD, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, uh, said that the flows of direct foreign investment to Egypt were up to 11.4 billion US dollars in 2022 compared to 5.12 billion dollars in 2021, achieving a growth rate of 122 percent. That came in an analysis issued by the IDSC, highlighting horizons of investments worldwide in the shadow of the Russian-Ukrainian crisis that began in February of 2022. According to the report, Egypt came first in the volume of flows of foreign investment into the African continent in 2022, hitting 25% uh, of the share of Africa's uh, share uh, of foreign investments and Egypt was followed by South Africa and Ethiopia respectively. Now the Egyptian Drug Authority, the EDA, uh, held on Wednesday its first meeting of the Egyptian South African Working Group to discuss a mem memorandum of understanding signed in June between the EDA and the Health Control Authority in South Africa. The meeting participants uh, discussed uh, mechanisms of activating the memo and the roadmap of benefiting from the successful experiments in the two countries. The meeting is uh, part uh, of EDA efforts to expand cooperation with its counterparts in the world to boost the drug industry in Egypt. And Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouri has underscored the importance of implementing the action plan aimed at developing river transport nationwide. Uh, the development plan comes in implementation of directives of His, His Excellency the President to reduce the cost, uh, decrease fuel consumption and take into consideration the environmental dimension. Um, the uh, uh, Premier's uh, meeting uh, was held at the government's headquarters in the new Al Alamein city in the presence of Transport Minister Kamil Al Wazir. The Egyptian state seeks to be, build more developed river units uh, as per global specifications and criteria in accordance with the current infrastructure in order to ease the transport of goods with the objective of reducing transportation costs and decreasing pollution. That is it for our first segment here in Business Insider. When we come back, uh, we'll be introducing you to our uh, distinguished guests with us here in the studio who will be uh, talking to us about the uh, role of AI in business management. We'll also be watching a report together about our main topic for tonight. Please stay with us. Welcome back, dear viewers, and thank you for staying with us uh, with us here in the studio. Is Dr. Naveen Makram Labib, the director of the Social and Cultural Planning Center, and the professor of artificial intelligence at the Jamia Hadard, uh, Hamdard University in India. Very good evening to Dr. Naveen. Thank you for joining us. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Very Allow much. us, please, Dr. Naveen and dear viewers, to watch a report first on the topic by uh, our own uh, Abir uh, Hussain and Rasha Abdelhamid. 
In the data-driven world, artificial intelligence has transformed the way businesses operate in recent years. Artificial intelligence power tools and techniques have become indispensable for modern business management, enabling companies to automate routine tasks, gain insights from the vast amounts of data, and make more informed decisions. Artificial intelligence has a wide range of uses in businesses, including streamlining job processes and aggregating business data. Artificial intelligence is expected to take digital technology out of the two-dimensional screen and bring it into the three-dimensional physical environment surrounding an individual. You probably interact with artificial intelligence on a daily basis and don't even realize it. In business, artificial intelligence has a wide range of views. In fact, most of us interact with artificial intelligence in some form or another on a daily basis. From the mundane to the breathtaking artificial intelligence is already disrupting virtually every business process in every industry. One significant application of artificial intelligence in business management is in customer service. Chatbots and virtual assistants are now widely used to provide customers with instant support, handle queries, and even make product recommendations. Artificial intelligence-powered sentiment analysis tools can also help businesses understand customer feedback and improve their products and services. Artificial intelligence can also be used to optimize supply chain management, allowing companies to monitor inventory levels, track shipments, and forecast demand. Additionally, artificial intelligence-powered analytics can help businesses analyze vast amounts of data from various sources, including social media customer feedback and sales customer behavior, market trends, and competitor activity. In finance, artificial intelligence-powered tools can be used to detect fraud and improve risk management. Artificial intelligence can also help automate financial reporting, budgeting and forecasting, enabling companies to make more informal financial decisions. Overall, artificial intelligence is transforming the way businesses operate, enabling them to streamline operations, improve customer services and gain a competitive edge. As artificial intelligence technology continues to evolve, we can expect to see even more innovative applications in the field of business management. Welcome back, dear viewers. Thank you for staying with us. Um, we are with uh, Dr. Naveen Makram Labib here in the studio. So, uh, Dr. Naveen, uh, it's been described by many experts the role of AI in business management now as in indispensable. Could you tell us just uh, in a glimpse why it is indispensable in today's uh, economy? Because business owners have to take decisions. And for them to take decisions, they have to use the approach of data-driven decision-making. So they need some predictive analytics, some descriptive analytics. So that's why we need some AI systems that should be fed with uh, internal and external data, whether we're talking about internal data related to the organization itself or external data related to the market or uh, political situation, economic uh, situation, and so on. Mm. And then we uh, make use of some AI techniques. And with these techniques, we can come up with some prediction. And with the prediction, we have some prescription as well. So we have the good scenarios and the bad scenarios represented to the business owners. And we give them, uh, let's say, insights and advice so that they can take proper and suitable decisions in the market. Uh, for some interesting numbers here that I have, um, uh, artificial intelligence has evolved around 13% globally in the past years, and business productivity has increased by 40% because of AI. Could you g g give us a comment on these two numbers? Again, we're talking about AI applications, not mm. only the data analytics and predictive mm. analytics, mm. but also uh, when you talk about any machine learning system, any uh, robots that are used in industry, uh, the IoT, the Internet of mm. Things, how we can make use of some sensors in order to provide the systems with data, streamlined data, and again, having some results that could be useful for the decision-making process. So we're not only talking about data, but also about knowledge and about insights, again. 
right. for business owners. Right. Uh, uh, also, some of the, the, the what I think is uh, some of the best of what I read uh, uh, says that AI uh, combines or tries to combine. I, I want to amend it into tries to combine okay. a leader's vision with a scientist's expertise. Because if we get those two together, of course, we get the best uh, results. So how can AI do this? I mean, a leader's vision and a scientist's expertise and move things forward. Okay. Again, that's the perfect team. Mm. Because we give our expertise, but we need the vision of the leader as well. Mm. Because the leader will be the one who's directing the system. Mm. And that's a point that we need to emphasize whenever we're in a meeting with the business leaders and with the business owners. So we need to emphasize that we're there only as like tools and expertise, but he has to direct the system. So for example, if he's tackling a new market or new production um, or a new system running his uh, organization, then he needs to lead us in order to help us make use of um, the required data and use our expertise in order to provide him with, again, the prediction and prescription. Mm. So it starts with the business owner, especially mm. when we talk about whether internal customers, the employees, or external customers nowadays. Right. right. You mentioned customers. So uh, I guess uh, uh, that knowing your customer or developing a relationship with the, your customers or would-be customers uh, or your uh, potential target or market is a key area for AI to, uh, to try and you know, dive into. So could you talk to us about that specific element? Definitely. We talk about KYC, or know your customer, mm. because in order to achieve any profitability, then we need to satisfy the customer. Mm. So in the past, we were talking about customer satisfaction. But nowadays, we're talking about customer delight and customer pampering. <laughs> so it's a different concept. Yeah. In order to do so, we need to have data about the customer, mm. what his interests are, um, his needs, his profile. So we cannot do so without the AI, because we're talking about huge amounts of data that we need to tackle and we need to analyze. And here, we're making use again of analytics, which is deep analysis. So we gather or we collect data about the customer, and we come up with a customer profile. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that customer could be, I don't know, it could be a country, it could be a city, it could be a village, it could be a town, it could be a group of people. Any customer. Right? Yeah. And again, we're talking internal and external. Mm. Because if your internal customer, mm. the employees, mm. if your employees are not satisfied and happy, then you cannot expect to have external customers who are satisfied and yeah, delighted, right. definitely, because the internal customers will be providing the services or the products. Mm. So you need, first of all, to have good internal customers. Right. And that's how we make use of AI for what we call the talent management, mm. how we place the, the employees. So we do some, let's say, tests and assessments and then you can place the employees in the, the proper, the suitable position right. so that they're happy, they're satisfied. And then you work on the external customers, getting to know them, providing them with up-to-date uh, info, uh, notifications, products, and so on. Right. Now, um, Dr. Naveen, uh, th there must be a great benefit of applying AI uh, in uh, business management. So how do mach machine learning and AI uh, technologies help businesses in, in general? I mean, machine learning and uh, 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 what's called artificial intelligence technologies. Okay, let's first of all define machine learning yes. and... Artificial uh, intelligence technologies, yes. AI technologies. Okay, so for AI, it's the, the umbrella, the big umbrella for us, so any system that is capable of doing uh, a task that is usually done and performed by a human mm. being and that requires intelligence is an intelligent task and an intelligent system. Mm. And then comes a subsystem, which is the machine learning. By machine learning, we're talking about, again, intelligent systems that are able to learn without um, any intervention from us as developers. 
because with the AI we used to interfere and add to the knowledge and the expertise of the system, of the program. Okay? Yes. By system we mean a program. Yes. Let's say it that way. But with machine learning, we kind of empower the system so that it can learn from its own experience. So whenever it is faced with any situation, it takes the decision and then uh, it has the consequences of the decisions again saved or in, in the same system so that it gains expertise whenever it is faced with any situation without having to go back to their developers. Yes. The, mach the machine itself? The system. That's what we call the machine learning. The mm. machine is so The learning. machine will learn? The machine yes. itself? It actually without intervention? Without intervention. Now that's mind-boggling, really, Dr. Nadine. Yes, mm. but it's using mm. some algorithms, some mm. uh, intelligent algorithms. And then mm. we have the deep learning. Mm. With the deep learning, it's the same story, but we're making use of what we call the artificial neural networks, mm. which is kind of um, simulation to the morphology of the human brain. Mm. Our brain is composed of neural networks, mm. so we developed some algorithms that are simulating the same morphology. Mm. And then came the chat GPT, the generative artificial intelligence. And here we're talking about innovation and about creativity, about generating new ideas. That's why people feel somehow threatened. Yeah, uh, uh, and here's an interesting question, I think, that just popped to my mind. <coughs> Now, obviously, and we've read about this, and I don't think anybody needed to read about it to, to know it, but uh, reading about it uh, affirmed what was in one's mind, is that uh, uh, the male brain is somehow different from the female brain. I mean, yes. there are differences. And I personally read that <laughs> female uh, brains tend to think faster, for instance. This is, at least uh, according to what I personally read. And it is more detail-oriented. And more detail-oriented. Yeah. But uh, the <coughs> male uh, uh, brain uh, um, is more analytical or something in that line. The, the machines that we are, uh, that uh, the, the world, you understood the question now. Yes. The machines that are being developed worldwide, the AI, the, the smart machines. Are they more, do they tend to we're be more like, yeah, yeah, that's it's, the question. I think we're trying to do kind of a combination mm. of both, trying to uh, make the machine learn so that it can see things from macro and micro mm. views. So it's mm. not only the comprehensive view mm. that's usually related to the main brain, mm. but it's also detailed oriented and that's how it learns. So mm. that's why we're kind of, you know, Scared. <laughs> but uh, do we know, uh, I mean, uh, how many uh, males or females were involved in designing these machines, or, or, or the design was dominated more by, by one gender than the other? Do we know? Um, actually, we don't have a detailed study with mm. numbers, mm. but sometimes uh, with some systems, we found out that they were biased mm. against women. Okay. Yes, especially in the recruitment uh, task. Okay. And that was not a nice finding because we're aiming at having some ethical mm. AI systems sure. that should not be biased whether mm. with or against. Mm. That should not be pro or against. Right. But it's, I guess it's only normal to assume that if that specific uh, system was developed mainly by, uh, by uh, females, then it could be, and I'm saying it could be, biased against males. It, I mean, it could. Maybe, yes. Yeah. Mm. Because uh, people think that with artificial intelligence systems, there are no biases, which is not true. Because when you feed the system with some biased data, yeah. then you come up with biased results. Yeah. So that's the key, the yeah. data. It's, it's very hard to, to obtain, I guess, 100% uh, uh, neutral or fair or unbiased data and put it in. I mean, there must be some sort of bias and at least, at least, uh, some percentage points uh, of the 100 percent of the data you are putting in. Definitely, mm. because we yeah. as humans, we're the ones who are feeding the system and yeah. we cannot claim that we are zero percent regarding the, the biases. So we're always biased, even yeah. when we do not realize it, mm. but we are biased, even right. when we try to explain the findings of the system itself. And that's a main challenge for us.
the complexity of the results and how we can explain and justify mm. the results obtained out of an AI system. Mm. Uh, Dr. Navini, you talked about the, <laughs> the, the KYC, you know your customer. What about the uh, increase in productivity uh, 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 due to the use of AI in business? Because, I mean, some numbers put uh, the uh, increase of productivity at 40%. I mean, that's a huge number. So could you tell us how this happens, <laughs> increasing productivity by, uh, via the use of, uh, of AI? Okay, first of all, we have some repetitive tasks. So we give these tasks to the machine. Right. So when the machine performs the repetitive tasks, definitely you come up with better performance because mm. the machines are trained, you know, to work 24-7. Mm. They do not get tired. Mm. So that's one of the points. Mm. Second is when you get these tasks to the machines, then people are more, um, let's say, focusing on better and higher tasks. That's why I always tell people that we are not aiming at replacing you. We're aiming at supporting you so that you do better jobs. And we're aiming at giving the repetitive a normal, let's say, traditional tasks to the, to the machines. So that's how you came up with this 40%. Mm -hmm. Very well explained. Now, enhanced monitoring is one of the other benefits of the use of AI in business management. Could you explain to this to us in enhanced monitoring? Okay, applying AI can help with the monitoring and evaluation of the tasks. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of more objective than when you rely on people. Mm -hmm. So we have systems that keep track of everything. That's mm -hmm. why when we tell people that uh, some developers work remotely, and then they tell us, and how do you know that they're working? Now we have all the tools that are monitoring their uh, performance and their work and how they do it. So we come up with better reports that can help in this uh, issue. Okay. Now, in which areas of business, uh, Dr. Naveen, <coughs> can uh, the use of AI be more effective or more influential or the results of the use of AI can be seen uh, um, uh, in a clearer way? Which segments of, uh, of business? Actually, you can apply it in all segments, uh, and you can, uh, again, apply it with all the stakeholders, whether you're talking about suppliers, uh, customers, uh, employees, business owners, competitors. So we can say that we can apply it in the business ecosystem as a whole. Mm. But from my point of view, since I'm specialized in data science, then I see that if you apply the artificial intelligence techniques in getting better <coughs> prediction and predictive analytics, mm. then you can help more the business owners, whether you're talking about um, the normal business or you're talking mm. about business between countries. So it's not only tackling the, the individual customers, but you'll be helping them with better prediction, better indicators, especially nowadays with all the new trends right, right. and the new variables in the market. What about the, the, the marketing segment of, of business? How can uh, AI play um, a big role in the development of the marketing um, segment? Actually, that was the start of applying AI. Mm. Here we're talking about the data mining applications. Mm. So the main data mining application in any organization was targeting the marketing uh, function or marketing department. Mm. Because they were uh, able to, making use of AI, they were able to study the market in a better way, discover new patterns, and again predict what will happen next. And having their marketing strategy customized to the new trends in the market. And that was very powerful. So the organizations who made use of AI in data mining were able to have better market share. OK. Now to, to specialize in, in artificial intelligence and in AI, what, what are the um, uh, academics that a person should study? I mean, is it computer science? Is it business management, is it marketing, I don't know, I mean, you tell us, artificial intelligence, what, what would prepare uh, um, 
uh, build a, a good generation for, for, uh, for, uh, uh, for AI? Studying what? Studying AI. Because now we it's have become a, AI, a science yes, on yes. its own. Yes. Okay. When I was studying, uh, when I was in university, as an undergrad, we had it as just one topic. Mm. But now it's, it's college. A yes. It's, yeah. it's a college by itself. So we have okay. the AI. Because with AI, you have, first of all, to study some uh, prerequisites uh, subjects, such as discrete math, for example. And then you have to go through what, I mean, we have different logic, predicate mm. logic. We have different uh, tools. Mm. Um, it's a different discipline. So is it closer to computer science, or is it closer to business? Or what are the closest? Uh, um, computer science. Computer science. Yes. OK. It started yeah. as a branch mm. of computer science, mm. but now it has its own subsystems, like the machine learning, the deep learning, the chat mm. GPT, the different applications. Mm. How can AI help in developing the skills? Can it? I, I mean, I'm sure you're going to say yes, but, but uh, and I'm sure it's, it's possible, but I can't uh, grasp how uh, is it doable. How can it improve? the level uh, 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 or the skill of uh, or train uh, the existing employees? OK, we apply the talent management software mm. that is already being developed using AI techniques so that you get to know your employee in a better way. So we have some assessment for the employees' uh, hobbies, uh, talents, skills, knowledge, attitudes, and so on so that you can have a detailed report that you provide to the, cust to the customer. We call it customer, the internal customer, the employee. Mm. And then he or she gets to know their kind of weak points, or let's say the, the points that need some improvement, their strengths and weaknesses, and having a detailed plan of how to improve their skills. Surely also AI can help in quality control or quality assurance. Could you tell us how this is manageable? Again, it's the same. But here we can feed the system with IoT. Here we're talking about some equipment. Internet of Things? Internet of Things, some equipment some that has sensors, so that we have kind of streamlined uh, data that is fed into the system. And this is how you can evaluate the, and assess the quality. And it's more objective, again, than individuals. Mm. because it has to follow certain criteria mm. and certain indicators. Mm. Uh, I'm sure that AI, uh, uh, elim I don't know if it totally eliminates human error or if it reduces it, you're going to tell us. Uh, does it totally eliminate human error or does it simply just reduce it? To, uh, Not really, mm. unless it is fed with proper data. Mm. Because when it is fed with noisy data mm. that is not updated, not uh, mm. accurate, not mm. complete, mm. then again... Errors will exist? Definitely. Mm -hmm. So it just reduces it? In it will reduce. Right. Now, uh, also, uh, um, does it make for safer operations. Th there is a worry about the increased use of AI, but at the same time, you know, we see the results are very good. So I want to ask about the safety, the safety factor. In general, can you say that AI makes for safer operations or at other times unsafer uh, operations? It depends on how you see it. I mean, if mm. you can give the, the robot, for example, some tasks uh, to do, then maybe you can provide a safer environment. <coughs> sorry, environment for humans. Mm. So it all depends on the tasks that mm. would be performed by the AI systems, whether mm. software or robots. Mm. But I think that um, you can come up with a better and safer environment. Mm. And that's not advice to your <laughs> field, right? Definitely, I'll be, I will be biased to my field. <laughs> no, but we're talking about more or less some facts how we can transfer some jobs to the robots so as to protect human beings. Like, for example, if you have um, the Robocop, that's one of the examples. We hope to see ro <coughs> um, robots in mining, ho hopefully. Yeah. 
we will see or it. Drilling or yes. yeah, okay. oil. Uh, I think very soon you will operations. see it in Egypt. Yeah. Um, if you're talking about the telesurgery, sometimes you need to operate um, uh, maybe mm. a patient that is mm. not in a safer environment. So mm. that's why <coughs> making use of robots mm. will provide a safer environment for humans. But on the other hand, we have the bad scenario, a very negative scenario about these robots that are aiming to destroy humans. Mm. So you have it both ways. That's why I told you that it, it depends on how you see it. Right, right. Um, and uh, <coughs> in general, could, could you predict, I mean, how um, things will be in 20, 40, 60, 100 years time from now? Uh, will we be living in a much more developed world in a safe way or in a much more developed world in a very unsafe way? Is it, I mean, is it a debate now between you scientists and this field or uh, uh, <laughs> is, is there one side of the, the, the coin um, having the better arguments? Again, we have good scenarios or let's say positive ones and negative ones. So it all depends on how you will train your system. That's a major idea because till now we cannot transfer values and ethics to the system. That's why you are scared. And as per Gartner Group, by 2040, we will have 150 million tasks performed by AI systems. Mm. So you're talking about a very developed world. But definitely we'll have some cons, some disadvantages to face. Because whenever you're empowering the machine, then you have to take very good care mm. of how this machine will take its decision. Mm. That's why we need to teach it or train it so that, you know, it performs kind of uh, in an mm. ethical way, mm. which is very hard for us because for mm. all the scientists and now, we cannot come up with any idea or any tool to make these systems ethical. Can, and, and it might never happen? Yes. Okay. okay. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, um, Dr. <laughs> Levine Makram Labib, Director of the Social and Cultural Planning Center and Professor of AI at Jami Hamdard University in India. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank pleasure you. is all mine. Thank, Thank you. you, Dr. Levine. Thank you, dear viewers. Next week, same time, God willing, is a new episode. Until then, have all the best and goodbye.